let's learn how to construct a confidence interval for population mean. So most of the time we don't know what population mean is. To find population mean, we have to have access to every single individual in that population, which is most of the time is impossible. So instead, we usually obtain a sample, and within that sample we find, we calculate sample mean, right? And then we use that sample mean to estimate population mean. So we estimate population mean by providing an interval. So we say that with a certain degree of confidence, um, we know that population mean should be in that interval. Well, how do we construct that interval? Idea is very similar to the way we construct interval for population proportion, except that here we will be using student's t distribution instead of normal distribution. Now, in order for us to be able to use student's t distribution and obtain the confidence interval, we have to make sure that three conditions are satisfied. The first one is that sample data comes from a simple random sample or randomized experiment. So we can only work with random data. Now, sample size is small relative to the population size. It's less than or equal to 5% of the population. And then data come from a population that is normally distributed. Or the sample size is large. So if sample size is large enough, then the population um, does not even have to be normally distributed. And when we say the sample size is large, well, the cutoff for that is usually 30. 30 individuals in a sample. Well, if those two conditions are satisfied, then this is how confidence interval is constructed. So we start with, again, sample mean, and then we subtract and add certain quantity that we call margin of error. And the formula for the margin of error is provided. We're going to look at it closer as we, uh, as we try the example. Now, this is our example. Travelers pay taxes for flying, car rentals, and hotels. The following data, data represent the total travel tax for a three-day business trip in eight randomly selected cities. So here they are, eight randomly selected cities, and they're corresponding uh, taxes, travel taxes for three-day business trips. We're also given a side note that Chicago travel taxes are the highest in the country. That's that's Chicago right here. And um, we know that normal probability plot suggests that data could come from a population that is normally distributed. A box plot indicates there are no outliers. Okay, so we will need all that to check the conditions. So let's do that right now. I'm looking at the conditions here and I'm gonna mark them off. So first of all, Sample data come from a simple random sample or randomized experiment. Um, do we know that? Well, yeah, because it says that those eight cities were randomly selected, right? That's the key word. So yeah, sample data comes from a simple random sample in this case. Now, sample size is small relative to the population size. So here um, we have, like, what is population? Well, population are all U.S. cities, right? There are thousands and tens thousands of cities. Um, in our sample, we have only eight. While we're not given the size of the population, we can use common sense to really see that, yes, eight cities is definitely less than 5% of all U.S. cities. We'll check this off. And then the, finally, it says that the data should come from a population that is normally distributed where sample size is large. Now, our sample size is not large. It's only eight cities, right? But we do have a note in our problem here, in our equation, that uh, normal probability plot suggests that data could come from a population that is normally distributed. And box plot indicates there are no outliers. So that's enough for us to mark this off on the list. So all conditions are satisfied. That means that we can now move on and find find the interval. Oh, by the way, I don't think I read the question itself. So it says construct and interpret a 95 confidence interval for the mean tax paid for a three-day business trip. So we have information about the sample, but what is um, population mean? What is the average tax that 
people have to pay for three-day business trip um, in the United States. Well, we will never find what it is exactly, but uh, we will we'll be able to obtain an interval such that we will be 95% confident that this interval contains a population mean. In other words, um, the average tax for a three-day business trip in the United States. So I'm going to rewrite the formula for constructing the interval over here so that it's in front of us and we can work on each piece. So we start with the sample mean and then we have to add and subtract. That's how we add both band, uh, bounds, lower and upper bounds. Add and subtract the following. T sub alpha over 2 times S over square root of N. So we're going to start by computing the value of the sample mean and sample standard deviation, right? We need both of them. So everything is based on the sample mean. That's what we also call point estimate. And then st uh, standard deviation, sample standard deviation is involved in the formula, right? It's part of the margin of error. Um, I'm going to use calculator to find both. So I will need to enter data into the calculator. So I'm going to press stat. Then I'll stay where I am right now. I press enter. Um, here I'll need to enter the numbers I'm given from the sample. Well, I'm going to clear all that information that I had from the previous example. So I press clear. Okay, and now I'm ready to enter. So I entered the sample. And now to find sample mean and sample standard deviation, I'm going to press STAT again. Um, then here I have to switch to CALC right here. And then it's line number one that I need. So I'm pressing ENTER. Um, yes, I'm using list one, so everything looks good here. List one, I'm pressing ENTER a few times. Okay, so from here I can see that X bar sample mean is 83.35 and then standard deviation s it's 12.32 sample mean sample standard deviation so, so that means that the average ta travel tax for a three-day business trip in those eight cities would be eighty three dollars and thirty five cents but is population average travel tax for three-day business trip is the same? Well, no, um, probably not, but somewhere close. So we're going to use that sample mean to, to estimate population mean. And that's where we have to continue with this part of the formula. So this part of the formula contains T alpha over 2, right? Let's, let's calculate that. So what is T alpha over 2? That's going to be our step 2. Determine the critical value. Now, alpha corresponds to the level of confidence, right? So alpha can be found this way. Um, if level of confidence is 95%, then what we're going to do, we're going to take 1 and subtract 0.95, which corresponds to the level of confidence. And that's how we obtain alpha. So it's 0.05. Now I can write it over here instead of alpha. So it's 0 0.05 over 2. Now 0 0.05 over 2 I can calculate that same as 0 0.025, right? And now my goal will be to determine the corresponding t value. Corresponding to what? Well, corresponding to this area. So that subscript indicates area to the right. area to the right of the t value with certain number of degrees of freedom. So what is the number of degrees of freedom in our case? That number, I'm putting df for degrees of freedom, is always one less than the sample size. Well, since sample size in our example is 8, it means that we're going to have 7 degrees of freedom. So it's 8 minus 1 equals 7. 7 degree, degrees of freedom. And as I combine those together um, and use the t table, t distribution table, I will be able to find the corresponding t value. So here's the table. 
Now, first I need to find area to the right, which is 0 0.025 in the first row, 0 0.025 right here, 0 0.025. And then I need to find number of degrees of freedom that corresponds to my example. Well, we said it's seven, right? So then I have to find seven in the first column. So here's seven. And now where is this row and that column intersect? That's going to be the corresponding T value. Okay, one more time, seven, and then 0 0.025 going to the, for the area. So it's 2.365. 2.365. So that's the corresponding T value. And that number will be placed over here in the formula. And the remaining part of the formula is easy, right? So S, we already know, that's the sample standard deviation, we already found it. And N corresponds to the sample size, which we know is 8. So we're ready to determine the lower and upper bounds of the confidence interval. So here's the formula once again. 3.35 plus or minus, well, one will provide, plus will provide the upper bound, minus will provide the lower bound plus or minus then t alpha over 2. So we calculated in the previous step, 2.365. 365 times, and then standard deviation, sample standard deviation is 12.32, and then sample size is 8, so it's going to be square root of 8. Um, of course, I have to calculate plus and minus separately, so first I will enter this all with a plus. So it's 83.35 plus 2.365 times 12.32 uh, divided by square root of 8. Enter. Okay. So when I add, I get 93.65. And when I subtract, so I'll to subtraction this way, I will highlight the expression I entered with the plus. I highlighted, I press enter, so now the calculator lets me to overwrite that expression. So I will go move to the left until I hit plus sign, and that plus has to be changed to minus. So I press minus and then enter 73.05. 73.05. Okay, so that's what we got for the interval. So interval, I can describe this way. 73.05 comma 93.65. But this is like a mathematic, mathematical way of describing interval. But what is the meaning of those numbers? Well, what are the units for those numbers? Well, these are the same units as we had in our sample. What are those numbers? Well, these are dollar values, right? These are dollar values uh, or total travel taxes for a two-day business trip in each city, right? So it means that these are still those dollar values. It's $73.5 and $93.65. But what about those? Well, that is the interval. That's where we think that population mean is going to be. So we can say that we are 95% confident that population mean tax for a three-day business trip is between $73.05 and $93.65, somewhere in the range. So this is how we can estimate um, population mean. Let me show you, and we did it by hand as you can see, let me show you how to find same result using calculator, which of course is much quicker. So to find confidence interval for population proportion on the calculator, you're going to press STAT. Then you're going to go to tests and you choose test number eight or line number eight right here, T interval. I'm pressing enter. And now calculator is asking me about what kind of input I want to provide. So there are two options, either data or stats. When I choose data, it means that I need to enter sample itself in the calculator, which actually I already did. Remember when we had to calculate um, sample mean and sample, st sample standard deviation for step one, we entered that data into the calculator. So that means that I already have it and that's the option I will use. And then I'll just have to say where that data is stored. It's in list one. 
But another option to provide calculator with information about the sample is to use sample statistics. So if I press stats and then enter, then what my calculator would want is the following um, sample mean, sample standard deviation, and then sample, uh, sample size. So if you have just that and you don't have sample itself, then that's where you enter it. Well, now I have all of that as well now, but I will go with the data as it um, for both options, for both types of inputs, I have to say what kind of um, confidence level, level I want to use. And it's 95%, so 0.95 as it says here. Then I press, cal plus, uh, press enter a few times and then calculator gives me the confidence interval. Let's compare it to what we got. 73, we got 73.35. Um, here it's slightly different well if we round it to to dollar then it would be same thing right 73 dollars and then 93.65 so the upper bounds are the same in this case right so this discrepancy is possible and it's just due to the rounding that happens at a few steps when you do it by hand so those two are rounded right um, so yeah that's where the discrepancy comes from but that's where you find on the calculator I'm going to write down steps. So here it is. So first step is to enter sample information. Either you enter the sample itself, as technically what we did in our example, or you enter uh, samples, sample mean and standard deviation if you have those. And then you go to stat, test, and then item number eight, t-interval.